This brings us to our chapter two question, which is how do individuals in a population get their trait? Let's take a look at some new evidence considering this question. How did the trait for increased poison level become more common in the new population? Pause the video and turn and talk to a friend or family member or jot down your responses on a piece of paper about the following question. What differences do you notice between these two histograms on the right-hand side? What I notice is that in this population 50 years ago, there was a large number of newts that included low poison level. And the environment that they were in did not include snakes. However, in this population today, I notice that there's a large number of newts that have a high poison level and their environment does include snakes. What we're gonna do now is use the simulation to investigate a claim. That claim is, reproduction always creates individuals with adaptive traits. We're gonna see if that claim is supported or refuted. Now, in the natural selection simulation on Amplify, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into my hamburger menu and go into reproduction claims. This will allow us to gather evidence about the claim we are investigating. I wanna load that reproduction claims mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an Osterlope to follow and will follow that Osterlope until it mates and be able to see the offspring that results in the process of reproduction. I'm gonna choose um, an Osterlope with non-adaptive traits first. I'm gonna click on my Osterlope and I'm going to follow that Osterlope and then select pause to pause the simulation after running it. Okay, so I see that the Osterlope is about to reproduce and I can see here we have one Osterlope that has a color of three mating with an Osterlope also with a color of three. Let's see what their offspring looks like. Their offspring also has a color of three. I'm gonna write that down on my data table sheet. All right, so what we saw is that we had one parent with a color trait level of three, another parent with a color trait level of three, and then the offspring color was also a color trait level of three. Let's do another trial and see what happens. Now let's see what happens when these two Australopes mate. This Australope has a color level of four. This Australope has a color level of one. The Australope that they have produced as offspring is a color level of one. Let's record that on our data table. Remember, these are Australopes with non-adaptive traits. Our first pair was an Australope with level three, an Australope with level three, and they had offspring with a level three as well. The second pair, one Australope was a level four, one was a level one, and then their offspring was a level one also. Now let's see what happens when an Australope with an adaptive trait reproduces. Notice how the Carnathon just passed by the Australope. And another Carnathon as well. Our Australope is now looking for a mate and he's found a mate with a color level of seven. We can see here 
that both australopes have a color level of 7. Let's see what their offspring looks like. What do you think it might be? So their offspring osteolope also had a color level of seven. Let's do another trial with another osteolope that has an adaptive trait for this environment. We're gonna follow this osteolope right here who has a color level of seven. They're looking for a mate. The mate that they have chosen has a color level of five. And let's see what their offspring might look like. What do you think? Their offspring has a color level of seven. Let's document this on our data sheet. So let's go ahead and record what we just saw in the sim on our data table. For trial one, we had one parent with a color trait level of seven. We had the other parent of that pair with a color trait level of seven, and their offspring had a color trait level of seven. In our second pair for trial two, we had one parent with a color trait level of seven, one with a trait color level of five, and their offspring had a trait color level of seven. So what does this all mean? If we compare our two data tables showing the osteolopes with non-adaptive traits and the osteolopes with adaptive traits, what we can see here is given the environment which had carnathons and a color level of seven, in both cases non-adaptive osteolopes reproduced with osteolopes that had non-adaptive traits and adaptive osteolopes reproduced with osteolopes that did have adaptive traits. Let's look at the distribution of this color trait on a population level. So here, as we can see in generation one, that we had a large number of osteolopes that had a blue color trait level. And that would be a color trait level of like one to five, essentially. However, in that same population at generation 10, what we can see here is that there are less osteolopes with blue and green color trait levels, and our trait distribution is now leaning towards yellow. So the colors, it's seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, and nine. Now, using all this data, all this evidence that we just found in the sim by looking at our australope populations and their colors, let's think about that claim again. Reproduction always creates individuals with adaptive traits. Pause the video, turn and talk to a family member, or jot your response down on a piece of paper. Was our claim supported or refuted by the evidence that we just gathered in the simulation? How do you know? So let's discuss this claim together. The claim, of course, was reproduction always creates individuals with adaptive traits. We can see now with the evidence and the, thus the data that we gathered in the sim, this claim is in fact refuted because non-adaptive traits were passed on just like the adaptive traits were passed on. There is no difference there. Ha additionally, in a population, the traits of the offspring are generally similar to those of their parents. So if there were blue osteolopes in the environment, then they would be passing on those traits to their offspring, generally speaking. And if there were more yellow osteolopes in the population, then those osteolopes would pass on their traits of color to their offspring generally speaking. In a population, the traits of offspring are generally similar to the traits of their parents, whether those traits are adaptive or non-adaptive. 
Reproduction plays a key role in how the distribution of traits in a population changes over time, but this involves, of course, having the opportunity to reproduce in the first place. So let's take a look at how trait distribution changes over generations with a predator and without a predator. Here we have our trait distribution diagrams over generations. This is the, the diagram we just looked at, and this is our population with carnathons. In our Australope color distribution, what we can see here in generation one with carnathons, we had more Australopes with a level one through five color levels that would be blue to green. In generation 10 though, our distribution shifted and changed so that more of our Australopes were at a color level of seven to nine. Now we can see here, there are still some of the lower color trait levels existing, but just not as prominent as those in the seven to nine color trait levels. Now, without carnathons, let's take a look. In generation one, just like we saw before, we have more Australopes in color levels from one to six and um, less in seven to 10. However, in generation 10 over here, what we can see here is that we don't get that same shift that we saw in the population with carnathons. So we can see here that our color trait level maintains at a level pro of prominence from one to five um, compared to seven through 10 versus that shift that we saw in the environment that had carnathons. 